Good morning, team. Team Epic creators. I had such a fun time at Unreal Fest. I got asked a lot of questions about optimization, both UE5 and Fortnite. And I also asked, hey, Micah, when are we going to get to see your optimization notes? Now, typically, these optimization notes for my meetings with clients are kept for my clients. I, I would go through time with you, spend three to five hours on the phone, talk about the existing notes I have and my implementations, then take any questions back, spend time after hours on researching and validating. Woo! Man, oh man, I killed it. I spent so much time building these islands and stuff that it's just, I didn't manage that very well. <laughs> I overcommitted. And so I want to go ahead and express all the things I've learned here. So I make sure that if there's any questions or if, if there's things I got wrong, I would love for you to help me validate and troubleshoot that these things are right. So far, what I'm finding from playing my levels and doing these validations on both my PC 4060 and also this $100 Switch Lite I bought off eBay um, shows that, yes, everything works and is correct. You can do GPU Niagara systems. You can unify those systems. You can use instant static meshes and hierarchical instant static meshes to render your environments and you can use the HLOD system or world partition system to automatically convert custom static meshes to or or non-static meshes to wide meshes or instant the difference I want to talk about between uh, batching your environment into ISMs versus using merge mesh HLODs is a pretty big impactful piece when you use merge mesh HLODs, which is the default setting for Fortnite, what happens is you make a bunch of cells or new static meshes in your environment by merging the world into tiles for an area. That is a beautiful thing for rendering. Why it's beautiful for rendering is that it makes that area a single actor or a single mesh to draw plus the materials associated. It hurts your package size because it's a very large custom mesh with a lot of vertices and a new custom texture and materials that are now stored in your package. And you get bigger and bigger worlds using merged mesh HLOD types to simplify rendering by your system, what they're intended to do. It does increase your package size and your memory by adding new Custom meshes are those tiles that you, or, or the world that you see. When you use a instanced page slot, it will bind the same mesh into a single component with all of its other meshes in that tile space. The bigger tiles you have in your world partition, uh, the kind of that bigger tiles you have. bigger these tiles are in the world here, the more of a chance, like you can see in this tile, that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of, of the same trees. Those seven trees, rather than having seven actors, seven static meshes, will be converted into a single instant static mesh component with seven instances. The component itself, static mesh component versus a instant static mesh component, static mesh component takes about twice the overhead. And so you want to basically have at least two instances be displayed instead of one static, or instead of two static meshes, you have one static mesh, it's cheaper than an instant static mesh component with only one instance. That trade-off, why you want to have bigger cell sizes, but you can get the same mesh you know, more than two times in an ISM and get that rendering advantage, uh, getting that memory advantage. So I have very large cell sizes out here. And in fact, uh, what I do in this level, I'm making my distance that we lo our loading range zero. Now when I make my loading range zero, that means I won't load anything in that's been, that's in the, H log system, I will only load the H log. Only show that merged mesh, or in this case, 
instant static meshes that have been combined together for rendering to play the game. Um, so if we were to come in here and hide every actor and just show the agent, look exactly like it does right now, because uh, that's what that's what we do. Now for collisions, the age log system, ISM seem to have some no collisions on the cut on the client, and so what I'm doing is putting my own collision planes in large large plane that goes in and actually does collision. Make it so that. Rather than getting the start, you're, you're clipping through the world if you're not rendering the world. You're actually going to do collisions with large planes. It does simplify collisions because uh, rather than having to check for each one of these individuals here, collisions about, you could turn it off. Turn off collisions on these actors as well and just use larger planes that I, that I put in. You could also let these actors be invisible after you've built your H log and just let them be uh, collisions by turning off streaming. Uh, so, you know, there's a couple of different ways to play around with uh, reducing down the amount of collisions you have. So, anywhere that you have a mesh that you won't be able to walk into or collide with, or that you can't see the shadow of, to disable the shadow and disable collisions, but you don't compute it. Likewise, if you can, if you don't need the mesh to be small parts, you might not want to split it up into small parts. Like my ground is just one big plane here, rather than anything special. You can still do nanolite displacement on this plane via the material and make it really dense and special. But if it's always going to because it's just one big ground plane, you can and it would be simplify it versus having. A whole bunch of smaller meshes. Now, when does this start to break down? The bigger your environment is. Because when you're generating mesh distance fields, which is one of the primary things that Newman uses, expensive, and it will generate the field for the entire mesh. If you have smaller meshes, it gives you a way to stream in that mesh distance. And we'll talk about mesh distance a good amount in the documentation we're going to be going. So we're at seven minutes here. Hang on to your butts, because this is probably going to be like a two-hour video where we go through 70 pages of you have done documentation about how this island's created and stack meshes are done and walk through it. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about what the heck computers are right now and why we're optimized. So you get a good idea of what we're doing. That. Well, here's, here's what we're going to, to, to talk about. I'll highlight it. Run with it. It's ugly. Add color. All right. So you have a computer. This computer could be running a 4090 trillion gigs of RAM and a freaking thread wrapper at 7 gigahertz or whatever. Or it could also be a $99 switch light you bought off eBay. Uh, it all has a bunch of common components that have bottlenecks that you have to consider when you're passing data around. So inside your computer, you have a CPU that does your central processing. That's, that's really the boss. It will pass data around to a bunch of really fast systems, but the CPU is in charge. Now that CPU is different in size. Mostly you can consider that you'll have four cores, or four CPUs, in most devices that you do common rendering. My computer now has 32 different cores. Uh, and hyperthreading, you take up the two, six, four virtual cores. Core can do work. And each core has to have data passed to it and passed through it through busways. Busways, best, are what connects different pieces. Your internet is a busway to the cloud. Your internet connection, what feeds into your PC, your package size, or your islands. So it varies. This switch light, I only have it connected over, I think, 2.4 gig uh, wireless. It's really slow uh, to download islands. Meanwhile, my computer at home is connected to a gigabit internet, up and down. So it downloads stuff extremely fast. The less data in your island, the faster those downloads will happen. Your customers will play. Also, the less data in your island, 
less data that has to be passed in between systems, RAM, video card, your hard drive, all have buses that pass this, or, or, or interfaces, lines like the internet that have to transfer this data inside your system. By lightening that up, make the overall process faster. When you have your 400 gigs of, or 400 megs of island data, it will come in from the internet and land on your hard drive. Your hard, there's a couple different hard drives out there. You know, a spinning disk hard drive writes at about 50 megabytes per second. A solid state SSD hard drive writes at about 500 megabytes per second. And when you go to modern day NVMe hard drives, write and read at about uh, 7, 000, 6 to 7,000 megabytes per second. Now there's a difference between megabytes and megabits. Bits are, is about eight times slow, smaller than bytes. So a byte is made up of eight bits. So internet speed is typically spoken about in megabits. Storage speed transfer is often spoken about in megabytes, writing to So a little bit funky to talk about there. So when you get your island, your corner meg island, put on your hard drive at whatever speed your hard drive is, coming in through your internet at whatever the internet speeds much always slower than your busways and speeds. So that, you know, it's just going to always take longer than your could be. Once it's on your hard drive, it has to be read into RAM. It's going to take, we'll say this right here is your island. Go to play the game, it's going to come out of the hard drive and go into your computer's RAM. That RAM could be, you know, 8 gigs of RAM, with the 6 gigs of RAM. Most handheld devices, like the Switch or your phone, are going to have less than 8 gigs of RAM which is the, uh, one of the slower, or one of the faster places for things, faster than your hard drive. How much faster? Like 10 times faster than your hard drive? Your hard drive is 70 in, uh, NVMe, 7 gigabytes per second on it. Your RAM could be up to like 20 or, or 100, or 22 to 220 megabytes per second of busway, uh, just between the two. What your RAM's going to do is pass that data being stored, your island, 400 megs of it, in your RAM over to your CPU to work on. So there's another bus way that's going to happen here, blue, where your RAM and your CPU are talking to each other. That's where you're working on it. Your CPU has some fast uh, memory attached to it down there, uh, but it's very small. It's going to be like 16 megs or like 64 megs of, uh, of RAM. That's extremely fast, attached directly to this, but a small capacity. That's where you're going to have to pass data back and forth to the RAM to fill up that space, do work on the CPU, or the CPU, and then process it out to your GPU to start rendering on. There's another bus way, the PCI bus way, that's passing data from the CPU to the GPU to start doing rendering. In your GPU, you have some rendering cores or more CPUs within it. That, and you have even faster RAM called your VRAM within your GPU. About eight gigs on average of VRAM on most systems, but when you go to handheld devices, mobile, that VRAM gets even smaller. Might even be shared RAM. Now the difference between VRAM, shared VRAM, is speed. So you're talking when you're talking about shared VRAM, typically it's going to be some RAM that's going to not just be uh, storage for the CPU, but it's also going to be storage for the, that means it's going to be sending data over the PCI busway, which is going to be slower than the on-chip uh, memory set in, in the GPU. All, and then ultimately, all this passing forth of data from the hard drive into your system RAM over to your CPU, from your CPU down, filling up your GPU, letting your GPU process data and then rendering it out and then if you're doing anything on your GPU that's talking back to this you have to come back the same way so this amount of data being moved around the amount of compute RAM virtual RAM and GPU and busways you have 
are all limiters on how on what ends up being seen on your TV, your frames per second. So when Fortnite says we're keeping the package size down to 400 megs, it's limiting how much of this busway is going to be impacted and how much island data you're going to have to be pushing around. The bigger your islands are, the bigger that package size are, the more of this work. Now, if you're using UEFN props, it doesn't change any of this. All it changes is that it's not more data on the cloud. Now, when I say it doesn't change any of this, it means that if you're using a um, UEFN mesh that they provide you, it's not going to cost you as much on your package size because you're not uploading something new. It's still going to impact the performance of your customers, your players, because they're going to still have to push that item, that data around buses and on the G work. So it saves you in a package size of like a, a idea, but the work still has to get done when you're playing the game. That's why your frame rate will change. Frame rate is really talking about how all this happens for each individual client. So you can't really define how your game's going to run for somebody unless you know what they're playing on and how and what type of data or how big your island is and how it's going to get pushed around their city. So in all cases, forever and always, the less data, less detail, the cheaper your meshes, your materials, all that is, will store less on the hard drive, which will be less in the RAM, less on the CPU, less on the GPU, and result in faster frame rates. Faster frame rates across all devices. That's what I focus on, what we're going to talk about, is how you can reduce your data, reduce your islands as much as possible, still get the experiences and results you're looking for, and not have it, and have it run as fast as possible. That's optimization. You have a target, if, but it's hard to say it, but a target of saying like, we need our systems to run at 60 frames per second on a switch light. That's our goal. When you hit that goal, you're done. It gives you an ending point. If you don't have that target, then you know you don't have anything to manage toward. Uh, you won't know when you're done. And you might press past it and take forever. That's what I've ended up doing. I just go and go and go. I have no stop. This is my stop talking about this. All right. 17 minutes, we covered how this works. Let's go ahead and move into the document.